Imagine a beach. The sun is shining, not a single cloud in the sky. You're on a holiday and you're about to take your first lesson of surfing until you look around and you see this. Hundreds of pieces of plastic and trash in the water, on the pavement, on the sand, everywhere. The year is 2016 and I have decided to go on a holiday to learn to surf in Morocco. Little did I know that this place of beauty and big waves was actually also the victim of disregard and pollution. On the very first day of the surfing trip, I collected vast amounts of plastic while being forbidden from the water due to my surfing competence or the lack of it. I left the question in my mind for a long time. Where did this plastic come from? How were humans impacting our planet negatively? These questions daunted me for a while until I decided to do something about it. I read a lot of books, I watched a lot of documentaries, listened to podcasts. I cried a lot. I decided to build a comparative data model that was looking at one hand at the environmental issues and the most severe ones as defined by science, and on the other hand was looking into which were the most funded environmental projects out there, trying to find the correlation. I also decided to interview more than 300 people, asking them about their opinion on climate change. Yes, in 2016, people had opinions about climate change. The results were devastating. Online, offline, on TV, in my interviews, the discussions about climate change were a mess. And more fundamentally, the data was showing that there was not enough funding going towards the most severe environmental issues. After six months of these events, I made a decision. I decided to quit my job in finance, I decided to quit my city, and focus my efforts on addressing climate change. On a more practical level, this meant that I was able to combine passions of mine, such as technology, science, accuracy, and turn them into a job. My story is one of many, fueled by sense of urgency and realization that have increased the populations of people and businesses talking about climate change. But it is one too few for what is at stake. Which is why today I would like to take you on a non-biased and fact-filled journey that tells the story of climate change. The story doesn't start but heats up in 1895. Then Arrhenius, a Swedish physicist and scientist in, chemi in chemistry, decides to find a new type of excitement. And for this quantifies the influence of CO2 on the greenhouse effect. This is actually an exercise that serves as a therapy, a therapy for him to overcome the separation with his wife, a therapy that leads to a Nobel Prize, mind you. A year later, the results of this study come out and are able to show that there is a relationship between atmospheric carbon dioxide concentration and temperature. This might have been the first step, the first instance when humans are able to tangibly take a step to address climate change. Might have. But like in everything in life, if you don't take the lesson the first time, life will shove in front of you further circumstances to teach you the same lesson again and again until you decide to take an action. So is the story of humans and climate change. Arrhenius wasn't alone in his effort to define and quantify what climate change was. He's been followed by hundreds and thousands of scientists who have been able to completely explain to us what is this man-made climate change. Yet, the projected emissions ahead of us look like this. 
until 2020. 2020 was the year of pledges. Pledges from countries such as Japan, China with their net zero commitments, from the UK with the climate disclosures mandates, the EU, the Green Deal, and Joe Biden being elected as the president of the US. On the company side, the list was endless. Walmart, Nike, Starbucks, and many, many more companies taking a stance and a step to be tangibly part of the solution towards a more sustainable future. And wow, we might be thinking that we're already organizing the party to celebrate the effect of these pledges. Let's think about it. Are these pledges enough? Are we actually able to tangibly prepare for the future with them? Wild Planet took a deeper breath in 2020 and received the New Year's gift of 7% reduction. We only saw a 0.01 temperature decrease in the projected increase by 2050, meaning all the effort and all the lockdowns and all the time that we all humans spent locked up at home actually let still through the effects of deforestation, land degradation, to even more further development of climate change. And on an economic level, this meant that the severity of natural disasters were going to continue to develop, the supply chains were going to be further disturbed, and the output of the economy, as well as the profits, were going to decrease. You cannot manage a life and a business in a failing world. In simpler terms, carbon neutrality and pledges are simply not enough for us to sustain our existence as individuals and as businesses. And for those of the countries and companies that have understood this today and are willing to go beyond the pledges, there is a price. The history has saved them a winner price in an economy that is going to be dependent on sustainable solutions. But rather than focusing on future scenarios, maybe let's look at the data and what we can do today to actually respond. Today, we are on track to hit 2.1 to 3.1 degree temperature increase by 2100 with the current pledges and policies that we have in place. We're also facing three times more plastic and trash in terms of waste that would need to be managed. With a whopping 91% of plastic not being recycled as of today. Our biodiversity is declining. There's data from the last 50 years that shows that we have lost 68% of the populations. And from all the birds that are on this planet, 70% are domestic while 30% are wild. If you put all of these issues together, our planet would look like this. Looks beautiful, right? It takes time and effort to digest all this data, but there's a common denominator there. Our planet is tired, and our planet is living and breathing more difficult and more heavily these days. A question comes, and it remains. What step did you take to prepare for the future? I want to take you back to this beach where we were in the beginning. Now this beach is using drones to collect the plastic. This plastic goes into bins that are able to recycle themselves. In the bins, you can find worms that are eating the plastic and making it disappear. In the further distance, you can see solar panels and wind turbines that are fueling now industries that have previously been reliant on fossil fuels. While the country where this beach is, is now using agroforestry and regenerative agriculture, as well as the water as a natural source of energy. This is not a vision. This is the reality today. A reality that has been shaped by people who know that the value of sustainability is not only environmental, but also economical. 
And this is the reality in industries, old and new. A question still comes and it remains. What step did you take today to prepare for the future? Before we answer this question, I would like to say something else. In the face of climate change, we're all small. A hurricane can destroy your house. A drought can destroy your livelihood. A flood can destroy your infrastructure and your business. But in all these events, in all these instances, we somehow miraculously are always able to recover and continue with our businesses and with our lives, which is what makes us human, which is what makes us superhuman. And in this superpower is where the solution for climate change lies. In this superpower, we find something crucial. Climate change is not one issue. It's a complex group of issues. And in the complexity, we find the solutions. Because in the same way that we have created the problem by millions and billions of wrong decisions for the planet, we find the solutions in the billions and millions of right decisions for the planet. Today, we're given a chance as citizens, as businesses, to take a deed, to take an action, to take a step. And yes, today, not tomorrow, not in five years, not in 10, no pledges, no promises. A step for reduction today. A question still comes and it remains. What step did you take today to prepare for the future? You took the first step by being here today. Now let's all take the next one. There's no plan B for the planet. <laughs>